Okay, we got running tips. Harley, can you please give me some running tips? I want to start running. Well, my tip is, first tip would be to get some good footwear. I use these Brooks Green Silence, made by the company called Brooks. Brooks, and these are made out of post-recycled consumer materials. They're like a barefoot shoe, but they're actually better than barefoot because they give you ample cushioning, so you're actually running on the forest floor with a barefoot lightweight shoe. These are about the same weight as the Vibram Trek Sports, and they're lighter weight than the Vibram Classic. So you've got a barefoot shoe, weight-wise, feel-wise, but you've got the cushioning, so you're not going to get the stone bruises, the shin splints, the back problems that are going to make you fat and burn out and slow later on in life. So Brooks Green Silence is called a racing flat. That's a style of shoe. Highly recommended for doing running races or speed work. Check it out. Great shoe. This is what I do most of my running in a Nike Vomero. This is a great cushion shoe. A little bit heavier than the, uh, the Vibrams there. But plenty of cushioning to do your, most of your miles in. Not that, not that I do a lot of miles, but <laughs> if I was doing you know, most of the miles is in the shoe here. A great cushion shoe, great trail shoe, great road shoe as well, breathable upper, and it's a good one. Highly recommend it. So that's what the first one taken care of is the shoes. You can the clothing I just run in like a vegan shirt or a, I run no shirt and just buy some basic running shorts that I've got from a two dollars two dollar shop from the thrift store. And now this is a little secret. This is my little secret from running sixteen fifty five for five K last month on average of 10 miles a week for the last three years. The Garmin 310 XT is my secret weapon. Why is this my secret weapon? This bad boy lets me pace myself in races so I can, I can write down my time, divide it by the kilometers and go, that's my average pace that I need to sit on. No higher, no lower. Just boom, like a run like a robot. And this Garmin baby helped me so much. I used to do running races before, go out way too fast and then fade at the end, like 99% of people do. Follow the, the the model of all the world record holders and do the negative split. Which what's a negative split? Negative split means that your last half of the race is faster, maybe just a little bit, than your first part of the race. If the first part of your race is faster than the last part, you went out too hard. And 99% of running races are on flat, so this, this is going to apply. It's not going to apply if you've got hills because your pace is going to be all over the place. Then you can go by heart rate. If your course is flat. The Garmin 310, that's where it's at. There's the Garmin 405, I don't recommend the 405. The 405 is, in my opinion, a piece of crap. This is Freely's, and it's good for scratching your nose. That's about all it's good for. Because the battery life's crap, it's not waterproof, the bezel goes all funny, and when you're running along, it's hard to look at. Because this is like a fashion watch. People people wear this because they're self-conscious because they think the 310 is too big. But I'll tell you what, it's almost the same freaking size. and the Garmin, the benefits, 20 hour battery life versus 2 hour or whatever battery life. Waterproof, you've got a bigger little face here, not by much, but enough so when you're running, you don't have to be looking at your watch like that, you can just sort of glimpse just by moving your eyes down and look at your pace per K or pace per mile. 310, I highly recommend it, I can also use it for my power meter on my bike, so it's ANT Plus compatible. Comes with a the heart rate strap, so it's great for when you're on hill races, so you can pace yourself evenly. Garmin 310 XT ain't the cheapest thing out there, but it's going to make your running just go because you're going to learn. You're going to get direct feedback, and an athlete who's got feedback and works with that versus an athlete who doesn't have any feedback or just doesn't care about that, one's going to progress like that, and one's going to progress like that. So I'm in the the former group. I'm in the one who I want the most data, simple data that I can incorporate and form a template, and that's why I can run so little miles and run so fast. I can get a top 10 in 99% of the running races out there on 10, 15 miles a week for the last three years. How? Because I run smart, I train smart, and I steal ideas from runners who run faster than me. And then we, people know what diet and water hydration strategies I recommend. I recommend going to bed early as you can, getting to sleep so you can recover. Because there's a big difference between doing training and absorbing training. What do I mean? Well, when you go to school, when I used to go to school, I went to chemistry class, physics class, I didn't pay no attention, I was stoned, I was half asleep, I was eating donuts. So I went to class, but I didn't absorb class. A lot of people go to training, but they're not really absorbing training because they're doing all the miles, but they're not getting any results. They're slow, they're still fat, they're just not getting any results because they're so overtrained, the cortisol's up or whatever, and they're not getting enough benefit for how much mileage they put in. So we want to absorb the training by training smarter. 
So to train smart, we want to follow a program set by a good coach relative to our fitness level, be it intermediate, advanced, beginner, newbie, professional, drugged up, super APO athlete or whatever. You want to have a program that suits your goals and suits where you're at now. So you can get those for free online or get a running coach who's good, who's reputable. And don't train like an advanced athlete if you're a beginner in running because you will fucking injure yourself and you'll be having time out and you'll be hating it. And you'll be one of those people who go, oh, running's bad for your knees because I started doing 50 miles a week or 100 miles a week off the bat and my knees couldn't handle it. Or I ran in those five and five finger fad shoes and I'm, I, I couldn't run slow and I'm, I'm just running slow and I don't know, like running's not for me, it's not for my genetic type or whatever. So no, train smart, use the right footwear, use the Garmin, stay hydrated, carb up, get to sleep and just do it, man. Because running is such a good thing to do. It's such a good sport. It's so fun. It's so natural. We can, I can be anywhere in the world. I can be in London, Paris, Bangkok, Singapore, New York City, LA, whatever. As long as I've got my shoes and some shorts, I can go for a jog, go for a walk, go for a run. It's a fantastic way to meet people. I love doing running races. Share the vegan message. It's great. And uh, so that would be my tip. Shoes. Garmin so you pace yourself. The right diet, lifestyle. Get a training program. Follow it and train smarter versus harder. You're always better off doing too little training than too much training. You're always better off eating too many carbohydrates than not enough carbohydrates. Trust me on that one. Hey, 16.55 for 5K on 10 to 14 miles a week for the last three years. That's what I'm talking about. So tell me about running, Jerry Rider. What do you want to know? What are the best shoes to get? Best shoes would be something like this, like a racing flat or when you're doing speed work or racing. But most of the time you want to run in a, a heavier cushion shoe. You don't want to have the stability shoes, etc. You want to have like a highly cushioned shoe, like a Nike Pegasus, a Nike Romero, a Brooks Pusser, or an Axe Nimbus, something like that. And what about running form? Running form, you want to have relaxed hands. You don't want to be like swaying your shoulders, but look, you can do this. Like but they have their fists going up in front of their face. Yeah, they're right running like this. Yeah. Like they're like a Muay Thai boxer. Like this. <laughs> Your hands will be low. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. And your knees want to be low. And your feet high. And you're going fast. And what about your um, your fit? Your fit. Like your butterflies in your hands. Yeah. Relax. And what about running gear, like, other than shoes? You would have some shorts and a singlet or run no shirt or a sports bra. You want to stay cool, let's get a bit faster. You want to stay cool. You want to stay cool, so if you get hot, your body's going to shut down your speed, and you're not going to run very fast because your body's getting too hot. And what about your hat? Your hat's a good one, keep the sun out of your face. Keep it a bit cooler. So, uh, that's, that's what I recommend for that stuff. But you want to be cool. You never ever want to overheat when you're running. So what have you noticed in people who are overheating? Well, face starts to go red. And they just start to, the pace just drops down massively. And if you use a Garmin like this, the really whole system 310 XP, it's a six hundred dollar watch in Australia, and uh, we're running about four minute case, four minute case pace right now. On the Garmin, it's my race pace. Yeah, this is called fitness there. Four minute pace, having a conversation. We're going to try here. Slow down, slow down. That's how you don't dress when you go running in the heat. You're going to get way too hot. Black eye, got to walk faster than he's running. He's just overheated, he's just dehydrating himself. Crazy, man. But some people in Thailand especially do that because they want to, they think they're going to sweat the fat out. Yeah. Which is not how you lose fat. <laughs> You're not going to sweat it out. You can't just sweat fat out, man. Because your body's trying to cool itself down by sweating. That's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. So if we look here, we can see our midfoot striking, not in the ball of the foot, not the heel, just midfoot. 
gentle hand carry, nothing clenched, relaxed shoulders, just flowing for easy. I'm barefoot running to the dad. I use barefoot shoes to make my feet stronger when I'm doing kickboxing or whatever. But in terms of running on karma, it's like punching brick walls with your hands. And uh, I don't know any elite runners who use barefoot in racing. You just have to slow right down. You're not getting as much of a workout on that. So barefoot running is actually start to slow. Compared, compared to running in proper shoes. If you want to run fast, run the same shoes as fast as running in the world, running. Simple as that. And people have been told the barefoot bullshit. Like if you run a barefoot, you're going to become like a some superhero marathon. It just ain't true. It just ain't true. So run in proper shoes, yeah, and barefoot, on the beach, or on the oval, where you get your feet stronger. So don't use barefoot in the concrete, please. What's the best diet for athletes, for runners, and why? The best diet is, the best diet is on a Kenyan tree, man. Low fat, high carb, low protein, plant based. The first time out of two marathons is going to be a fruit eater. Definitely. The drug technology we have now in running, we're seeing running times of 203, 204. You put that same drug, person, same training, same prize money, you put them on a fruit based diet, vegan, they're going to break the two hour record definitely, 100%. And people say, oh, runners don't take drugs. That's why I do shit, man. If runners don't take drugs, we'll be running sub 150 for the marathon right now. With drugs. If we're running 203 clean at a high high carb, low fat, plant based diet, like I had a gap for working at Perga, those guys aren't doing drugs. They're going to be able to run 150 in the marathon, sub 150. People say drugs don't work. I'm like, you don't have any idea. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, drugs start to work, EPA works. Why don't like you know, high protein, paleo style, you know, raw meat eating, high protein, fleshy diet yeah. work for runners. Because running is all about having a light going. Okay. So it's you know, straight upright. It's not like, like that, it's not like this. It's just straight. <laughs> if anything, it's leaning forward slightly with a straight back. And that's just not my opinion. That's that's all the top world's top marathoners are doing. So you just. That's your peer group on YouTube. You look at the, the best runners and just go, okay, that's what I said. Oh, Ryan Hall. Oh, that's how he runs. Yeah. Paddy Gabby Celeste. Oh, that's how he runs. They're running in Vibrams? No, they're not. They're running in racing flats and they've, they've got 10 years' history of running. And they wouldn't even run in Vibrams. Even with the best history in the world. If you want to go barefoot, make sure you run barefoot on uh, soft surfaces like grass. And it's or like on the beach. The beach, 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 beach is excellent. Yeah. You make sure you don't do too many miles because it's, it's off camber yeah, the whole way. The forest is good because it's always off camber. Yeah. The beach is sort of like like that the whole way. So you sort of, you know, you're running like that for a long time. <laughs> the, the forest is probably the best because you're like, you know, up and down, around, that's great. The beach is excellent if you're trying to find a flat spot. Again, it doesn't matter too much, but just don't do most of your training on the beach. Central Park's good because it's, you know, so many people to run with. Central Park's awesome. It is, <laughs> yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> Nothing like that in Australia. Okay, so we got some shoes here. I want to give some people in Thailand, some, some runners that uh, don't really, can't really afford a pair of Nikes, because these Nikes, a lot of this stuff's made in Thailand, but it actually costs more to buy in Thailand than buy it in New York City. It's crazy, it's made locally, but it costs more money here than in New York City. It's like you know, MacBooks in China cost more in China than in New York City. So we the same report, you the same report that it's made in Thailand cheaper, you can watch it from the state and 30, 30 bucks in the US, 70, 80 bucks in there. Great. So we're going to get some shoes away. And uh, what I found is I've got the same shoes here, one's a size 10, one's a 10.5. Because I've been using the barefoot shoes, running on the grass and running on the beach and stuff like that, when I use my racing shoes on the road, I've had to go a size half up. So these are 10, which I'm going to give away. 
there's a 10 and a half for shooting now. The 10 used to fit me, now doesn't fit because my feet have become bigger using barefoot shoes on the grass. And the Nike Camaro, I'm normally a 10, even too small for me now, I had to step up to a 10 and a half in Camaro. So I'm going to give some of these shoes away to some, uh, some runners. These are from Michael Weinstein, Futura. This guy, he won the Vermont 100 for these shoes. And uh, then Bill got fourth place, I'm going to pass these on to some Thai runners, and I'll just use them. And uh, please. I'm going to wear out. I found a piece of rubber today that I can uh, include one of the shoes for the free bonus for the heel plug. <laughs> and uh, I use everything here, it's pretty cool. So, uh, that's something to do when you're on holiday and you put some excess clothes on your shoes, pack it in your bag and uh, 